Hi, my name is Sergio Nava, pastor of Living Word Church here in Garland, Texas. I ask that as you watch this video, you will remain open to what the Holy Spirit will want to speak into your life. Thank you. Hallelujah. There we go. Got some power now. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the Lord's house this morning. It's good to see all of our visitors this morning. God bless you. Thank you for coming to the God's house. You know, I know God is uh, doing something good in this time, in, these, in this time that we're in, in these last days. But you know that we're going to be going through some stuff. But we got to keep going through. Amen. Uh, there, was a, there was a singer, I can't remember his name right now, but he was singing, if you're going through hell, just don't stop. Amen. Just don't stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Amen. I want to give God praise this morning. <laughs> He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. You know what? It's not me, but it's Him in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is... Oh, hallelujah. I want to give Him praise. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. The anointing. Let Him let it come. Let it come this morning. Uh, the anointing is here. God has been giving me this message for about two weeks. I've been dealing with it and, you know, kind of arguing and doing this and doing that. And, and I didn't know, you know, so the Lord said, this is the one I want. I said, okay, Lord, you know, we're going through some times right now in the United States of America that it's not stable right now unless you're under the blood of Jesus Christ, amen? I want you to know this morning that there's help in the time of need, amen? That there's help in the time of need. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll open up this morning. Father, we lift up the name of Jesus this morning. God, we thank you that you are the mighty God of Israel and there's none before you, God, and there'll be none after you, God. Father, we just submit to your authority this morning that you would receive all the glory, Father God, and none will come to us, but it will all go to you because you are the mighty God of Israel. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody say it. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I wanted to tell you, you know, there's a, there's a help in the time of need this morning. I, I, I know from going through some experiences myself and uh, relating to other people in the last weeks and months, you know, there's, there's some anxiety that's going on and there's some, there's some hardships that's going on and there's some, there's some battles that's going on. But I want you to know now that there's help in the time of need. Amen. I want you to know that we serve a mighty king. I, like, like my brother, you know, we just, we have to support one another. The Bible says in uh, Galatians 6, 2 says that we should, should submit one to another and pray one for one for another, that we may be doing what God wants us to, to do. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You know, I thank God this morning that he is worthy and that there is help in the time of need. Hallelujah. You know, we've been talking about people... People coming up to the altars, and uh, I, I'm not going to tell everybody's personal stuff, but I know that people have been going through some uh, anxiety and, and through some fear and through some depression and worried about what's going to happen to their lives and what's going to happen to, you know, am I going to lose my job? Am I going to get a promotion? Is, 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 my, is my marriage stable? Is my life stable? As long as we are in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to be stable. As long as we stick together, we're going to be stable. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus Christ himself, he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. You know, I don't know why God uses the tool of suffering, but sometimes he'll use the tool of suffering to bring you to the place where you need to be because sometimes you don't have your ears open when you're going through there and you're having a good time. You got a pocket full of money. You're riding, you ride, you know, and everything's going good. Your ears aren't open. So God says, let me, let me change the mode here. Let him, let him go through a little bit of something. Let him go through a little bit of something. I want to get his ears open. I want to get his ears open because I got something for him to do and he's not listening to me. She's not listening to me. But I'm going to get him to listen to me. Amen. Amen. God is a mighty God. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. You know, a lot of times we bring stuff we bring stuff on ourselves, you know. We get out there and we try to mix it up with the world, but God don't want us mixing it up with the world, amen. He said, be ye separate. Be ye separated, amen. That means not of the world. We can be in the world, but not of the world, amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, man, God is good and His mercy endureth forever. I believe we're in the last days. 
I believe we're going to see those eastern clouds split and I believe we're going to be raptured up to be with Jesus. And then this old world's going to go through some tribulation time and I don't want to be here during that time. But I want to tell you today, God's got a word for you. There's help in the time of need. There's help in the time of need. Right now, if you need some help, just say so. I don't know about you, but I need help every day, amen. I need help every day. I can't stand on my own. I can't stand on my own two feet. I got to let Jesus carry me. I got to let him walk and hold my hand. I got to get him to help me get up out of the morning bed. I got to get on my knees and thank him for allowing me to go through the day as I go through it, amen. There's nothing that I have that does not belong to him because everything that he gives me came from him. Amen. Proverbs talked about it. In Proverbs 12, 25, he says that anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. But a good word, I'm telling you, listen to me, but a good word makes it glad. I'm telling you this morning, if you get all excited and you get the anxiety, you know the fear comes. Fear's not of God. If you have a fear of the Lord God Almighty, that's godly. But fear, when it comes, is not of God. And what it does, it causes anxiety. It causes depression. It causes more fear. And it causes you to be afraid. But the Bible says that a good word makes it glad. We need a good word. You need to tell your brother, Jesus is Lord. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. up. Hallelujah. Get up. Get up and praise him. Get up and praise him. Get up and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy. I'm telling you, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I'm telling you, he may knock me down, but I'm not going to stay down. Hallelujah. I'm I'm telling you, in Holy Field, he fought Mike Tyson. It was a battle. It was a battle. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, Holy Field stood to 15 rounds. You may look like you've been in a fight with Mike Tyson, but he has the belt. Amen. He came out to victor. I'm telling you, you may look like you might go through a battle, but Jesus is a King of kings, and he's a Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I'm telling you now, hallelujah, that he is the one and the only. He is a Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Timothy says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. It don't belong to us. It belongs to the enemy. He didn't give it to us. He gave us power. He gave us power through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He gave us power. He gave us power. He gave us a way. The Bible says in Acts 1 8 that they received power. Amen. Hallelujah. And they were to receive that power to be witnesses. Amen. Unto Jerusalem, unto Judea, unto the Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. They got that power to be a witness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me get a drink of water here. Oh, hallelujah, I'm excited this morning. You know, I'm excited this morning. Hallelujah, somebody's been praying for me. You know, I, I want to give a quick testimony right now. I've been in the hospital recently. My number five vertebrae ruptured. Uh, my sister said the other day, she said, God spoke to me, told me to pray for you. Told me to pray for you. I said, I'll receive your prayer. She called the church and the elders of the church up. They laid hands on me. I'm telling you, they laid hands on me, the elders of the church. I went back to the doctor on, was it on Friday? And uh, he pulled up the little screen that he has, and he says, yeah, there's a, there's a rupture here in number five, but we're not going to do surgery. We're going to let it go. Amen. Amen. He said, I don't know, the pain just went away. Hallelujah. I, I tell you. The pain just went away. The pain just went away. The rupture's still there, but I think God's going to finish what he started. Amen. Hallelujah. He said in Philippians uh, 1, 6, he said, Being confident of this very thing, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 
He's worthy today. He's worthy today. I'm going to praise him. And I'm going to keep on praising him. Because you know why? Because there's nobody else I can praise. Can't nobody else get me to heaven except Jesus Christ. Can't nobody help me except Jesus Christ. Can't nobody get me to the throne of the Father except the Son, Jesus Christ. And we got to get, we got to love one another. It is no ifs, ands, or buts. Hallelujah. We got to, we got to come into unity with the joy of the Holy Ghost. And we, we, we was talking about this morning about Nehemiah building the wall, how he got a burden from God, how he wept over the things of God. What did he do? He fasted and he prayed and he sought God, sought God for an answer. And you know what happened? God answered him. Uh, hallelujah. He was the cupbearer for the king in Persia. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, and he got the king to give him papers to go across the land that the governors wouldn't stop him. He got the timber. He got everything. He got the favor of God. I'm telling you, when you're walking in the presence of the Holy Ghost, you got some favor. Amen? Hallelujah. You got some favor. You got some favor. You got some favor. Hallelujah. When times are hard, just keep going. Hallelujah. When, when the devil knock you down, just get up. Amen. When he knocks you down again, just get up. Say in the name of Jesus, I have the Spirit of God. He didn't give me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Get your Bible out and tell him a few things. Get the Bible out and tell that old devil that, oh, there's going to be a small angel coming down from heaven very soon. He's going to drop you in a pit for a thousand years. You're going to tumble and roll, and you're going to see how it is to fall, how you caused all the nations to fall, how you caused the people to fall. You're going to fall for a thousand years, and then the Lord's going to pull you out just for a minute. Then he's going to take you over and put you somewhere else, and you're going to be in there for eternity. Hallelujah, the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. He's going to throw hell, death, and the grave in there. Hallelujah, and everybody that don't say the name of Jesus Christ and bow to the name of Jesus Christ is going to be there. Amen. Hallelujah. God's doing something in here. Can you feel that glory coming in here? Can you feel that glory coming in here? I can see it. It's like a cloud. Hallelujah. You know what? You got to give somebody a good word. You got to give somebody a good hug. You know, I, I see people coming in the church and, oh, they give me a good hug and they give me a kiss on my cheek. And, oh, I, I enjoy coming to church when the little kids, they come up and they, they, they want a piece of candy. If I got some in my pocket, I, I try to give them a piece if I got it. You know, them kids that we train up, that's our next generation. Amen. I've been prophesying over these two kids right here, Amir's boys. I've been calling them apostles and prophets for years. I think God's going to honor that. Amen. Hallelujah. Since they were babies, ever since they could walk, I said, there's the apostle and there's a prophet. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm speaking a good thing. Amen. I'm speaking the word of God. My sons are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I fought for them, but God gave them to me. Amen. they both being used in the church right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you got to fight for what you believe in. You got to fight for what you want. You know, your children don't stay children very long before you know it. They're grown. They're grown and they're gone. But you got to put the word in them when they're small. Put that word in them when they're small. Take them to church whether they want to go or not. Yeah, you're going to church. You're living in my house. You're going to church. Amen. I, you can ask my boys how many times they went to church. They said almost every day of the week. Dad, Dad made us clean the bathrooms and vacuum and he made us mow the grass and everything else. But you know what? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't want to get to heaven. I don't want to see my family. That's not what God wanted. God wants us all to come together. He, he's got a reason for you to be saved. He's got, a, he's got somebody in your family he wants you to touch. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, 13. This is going to be a two-parter. I'm not going to be able to get through all of it today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 15, 13 says, A merry heart makes cheerful countenance. Hallelujah. If you can't just tell somebody that you love them, and hey, let me take your hands. Let's go to the Lord. God gave me a dream about you. God gave me a dream. He wanted me to lay hands on you. 
God told me to tell you that you're going to make it. God told me to tell you that you're going to make it. Amen. You're going to make it. You're a child of the living God. Hallelujah. I said, I said, a merry heart makes cheerful countenance, but a sorrow of the heart uh, is, a, is like a broken spirit. Amen. We don't want to have a broken spirit. We don't want to have the anxiety that where the anxiety brings fear, it brings sorrow, it brings bad things. We need to bring the Word of God in. We bring, need to bring the Word of God in because a, because a good word makes it glad. I said a good word makes it glad. I want to tell you what Jesus did for us. Jesus did it all for us. In Isaiah 50, verse 4 and 5, the Bible says, The Lord has given me the tongue of the learned. Did you hear me? The Bible, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned. All, all wisdom, all knowledge comes through the Word of God, comes through God, comes through the Holy Spirit. And you get the tongue of the learned. I'm going to tell you something right now about Jesus. He didn't do anything without what he heard his father say or he saw him do. He did nothing on his own. Everything he saw the father do or say that he did. Amen. And I don't want to do anything that I don't hear the Holy Spirit tell me to say. Amen. Hallelujah. There was an old time preacher. Hallelujah. Uh, we're uh, over in California named Smith Wigglesworth man used to hide behind an orange crate man used to hide behind an orange crate he wouldn't say nothing he wouldn't come out behind that orange crate till the Holy Ghost told him to come out <laughs> when he came out the word of God came out amen I, I want to be a man of God I want to be a, a man of God who hears the word of God and is not afraid to speak the word of God in Isaiah this morning the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season. I'm telling you people, you should know how to speak a word in season. You should know how to speak a word in season. I, I see some people around here, they, they, they got their Bibles open in prayer meeting night and, and they're praying the scriptures. They're praying the scriptures. Hallelujah. They're praying the scriptures. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't got it in, you can't get it out. You got to get it in and get it out. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to tell you, there's going to be some rough days. There were some days I didn't think I was going to make it. I call on my little wife. She's a prayer warrior. I say, come and agree with me. Come and agree with me. Call the ladies of the church. Call the favor ladies. Tell them I need some prayer. Hallelujah. We got to get the people praying for us. We got to stand together as a body of Christ. We got to stand together in our men's group. We got to stand together in our women's group. We got to quit playing church. It's too late in the season to be playing church. We're in the fourth quarter. I'm telling you, we're in the fourth quarter. We're in the fourth quarter. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm pro oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you'll have a word in season to him who is weary. You see somebody. You can see somebody that's weary. You can see they're going through something. I want you to get a word for them. Get in the Bible and, and tell them, hey, God told me to lay hands on you. God told me to tell you, you're going to be okay. It's going to be all right. You're going through a time of mourning right now. You've lost your loved one. You've lost your best friend. You've lost your husband. You've lost your wife. You've lost your brother. But I'm going to stand with you. I'm going to stand with you. I know what it's like to lose somebody. And God give you supernatural strength to go through that time and through that, se through that season. Amen. Amen. It's hard. But God gives us strength. He gives us strength. He awakens me in the morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn away. Amen. Amen. When the God wakes you up in the morning, or he, sometimes he says, turn off the TV, it's time. 
It's time to get with me. It's time to, to, to pray. I got something to tell you. And I want you to read a little scripture. I want you to hide. He said, I want you to hide this word in your heart that, that you'll not sin against me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be closing in a minute. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. I'm excited. You know, I know what I know what it's like to be in the pit like Joseph was in the pit. You know that you know what the pit was for Joseph? It was a place of safety. Because if he wasn't in the pit, he would have been dead. It's a place that saved his life. A place that saved his life. I don't know if you've been in the pit before, Amen. but if you've ever done anything for God or you're ever going to do something from God, I imagine you'll get there one of these days. But let me tell you, Joseph went from the pit to the palace. Hallelujah. He, he knew how to hear God. He knew how to hear the voice of God. He knew how to be obedient to God. Amen. Hallelujah. There's help in the time of need. You see, God has a plan for His children, for those who keep His covenant. You know what a covenant is? A covenant is a promise between two people. Amen. It's a covenant. It's a promise between two people. Each person has a side. Each person has something that they're supposed to give. God gives this and you give this. And that's the covenant. The Bible says when a man and a woman come together, they, they are married until death do they part. That's a covenant. Amen. We have a covenant with God for eternity. At the rapture or at death, God will call us home. And we're going to be with Him for eternity. I like what it says in John 14. I'm not, I haven't got there yet, but I'm going to get there in a minute. He said, in my house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Let me go back up. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we've got to believe in God in the hard times. You've got to believe in God when you don't. You know, your mind's telling you not to. There's going to be a time of testing Jeremiah 17.10 says, God tests the mind and the heart. I say, Lord, my mind's been through a lot of testing. I don't know if I can take it anymore. And at that time, all I can do is holler, Jesus. Jesus, I don't know if I can make it today, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I need your help. He said, stand up, son. Stand up, son. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of time. Even to the end of this age. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I got me a mansion up there and I got me a big chopper in the garage. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, if it was not so, I would have told you. Jesus wasn't lying to his disciples. He said, I'm, I'm, I've got some people up there and i got them to work and they're building some mansions. They're building you a house for eternity, amen. They're building you a place where you can stay, where you can visit with the Father. There's going to be streets of gold, amen. There's going to be trees with leaves on them for the healings of the nations. There's going to be fruit on those trees that we can heat for our healing, amen. amen. Hallelujah, God is a good God. God is a good God and His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. Hallelujah. And where I go, you know the way. But you remember Thomas, one of the twins, the doubting Thomas. He said, Jesus, I'm not going to believe unless I can put my hands in the holes of your fingers and, your, and stick them in the side. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, I'm not going to believe. But here in, in number 5 on, on John, number 14, number 5 says, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I'm going to give you some instructions. I'm going to write it down for you very plainly. I'm going to give you the instructions, and you're going to know how to get to where I'm at. Jesus told him, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There's no way to the Father except to me. Amen? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No way to the Father except through me. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm telling you, the glory's in here this morning. God's going to do something. God's doing, you know, there's a lot of people here this morning that's been going through some burdens. 
There's some people here this morning that's been going through some anxiety. Uh, you know what? But the anxiety is no good. It doesn't come from doesn't come from a God. But I'm telling you right now, I'm fixing to give you a good word. It's going to be okay. Amen. God's going to bring you through it. I'm going to tell you this. You put you write this down. Philippians 1 and 6, you write it down. Being confident of this very thing, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You write that down and you put it in the bank account because it's, it's, it, it, you, you can put it in, in your little gold basket and put it in your savings account and put it in your checking account or hide it in a wall wherever you want to put it because it's, if God said it, it's going to come to pass. Hey, if God's given you a promise, it's going to come to pass. A lot of times we get our own selves in trouble by not doing what God wants us to do. We get out there and we stagger this way and we stagger that way. And, and if you're staggering, all you got to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I, I just bow before you, Lord. If I, I, like David did in Psalms 139 and 23, he said, Lord, search me, O Lord, and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the path of everlasting. Amen. Amen. But when you ask God to search you, get ready for a search. Ah, man. He's going to pat you down. He's going to see what's there. And then he's going to He's going to let you suffer a little bit. I'm closing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's help in the time of need. I'm telling you, there's help in the time of need. I like this. Jesus Christ himself, he took all of our pain and all of our sorrows. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says, Surely He has borne our griefs and He carried our sorrows. Jesus Christ borne our griefs and He carried our sorrow to the cross. When He picked up that cross and He walked down that road and He got on the hill of Golgotha and they pulled that they pulled him down and they nailed him down on that cross and they put those spikes in his hands and in his feet and they pulled him up on that cross. He took your pains, he took your griefs, he took your sorrows to the cross that you wouldn't have to carry them. The Bible says that he was a great high priest. He suffered everything that we suffered yet without sin. So we know when we go to the Lord Jesus Christ, he knows what you're going through. He's been through it. He was tempted in all points such as you are yet without sin. Yet without sin. Man, 33 and a half years old, he lived to serve his father. He did only what the father asked him to do. Amen? I'm closing. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, have your way today, God. Lord, have your way. Holy Spirit, come. <clears throat> Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He died on the cross for our sin. The lifestyle that we live, he died for. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Do you hear me? By his stripes we are healed. John 8, 36 says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty, and there's help in a time of need. And I'm really going to close this time. Hallelujah. I'm going to close this time. This is going to be a two-parter, gentlemen. If the Lord allows, the next time I come to the pulpit, I'm going to do the second half. God is good, and there's help in a time of need, and I'm going to read one more scripture. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Amen. Amen. Let me read it again. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. There is help in a time of need. Jesus Christ is our help. Let's stand. Jesus Christ is our help in a time of need. Oh, Father, I worship you today, God. 
I believe everything that you said in your word, God. I thank you today that you're doing something. I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it. I believe the anointing of God is already working in this church. I know the Holy Spirit has already touched a few shoulders. I want to tell you, I'm going to give a, an altar call for salvation. And I'm going to give an altar call for those that have been going through some things like the, the, like the anxiety and the depression and the fear. I'm going to give you a good word. I want, I want that salvation first and then those that are going through something second. I want you all to begin coming down to this altar. Don't be afraid because the Holy Spirit's going to meet you right here. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yala boko koko koko ria takayete boko koria. Shili kokonda kakaya. You know, it's not a shame to ask God for help. Say, Lord, I just need a little help. You don't have to tell me what you're going through. You just say, I need a little help. Is there help in a time of need? Yes, there is. And I know there may be somebody here today that needs some help in the salvation area. I'm not really sure if you've never been saved or if you've just turned your back on God. If that's you, I would ask you to come out. Brother, you know that song that talks about the rain, can you put that on? Hallelujah. It's beginning to rain. The rain is coming down. The glory is coming down. God is going to meet you right here in Living Word Church. Amen. God is going to meet you right here in Living Word Church. Come on down and let's praise the Lord together. Come on down and let's praise the Lord together. Shout out, out, out. I pray the Lord has touched and blessed your heart through this message. If after viewing this video, you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would like to invite you to say this short prayer with me. Join me right now as we go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, God, I ask you at this very moment, God, that everyone that is viewing this, this video, God, that you will come into their life, God, touch them, God, and change them, Lord, mold them into your image. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to come and touch me, God. Restore my life, God. Touch me in a different way, God. I ask you, God, that you will change me, God. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen. I would also like to invite you to one of our upcoming services to experience the power of God personally. May the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you. Thank you.